We've got this new NAFTA deal. We've got bond yields. We've got the European market soaring. What is the main thing for you and your team to watch right now for your clients? So um, first off, thank you very much for having me and good morning to all the watchers over there. Um, look, it's, uh, the, the main news clearly is, is the new NAFTA deal because it's sending a, a general signal. Um, it's sending a signal that uh, the way that the United States is pursuing its trading tactics, if you like, or its negotiation tactics does work. It's a high risk strategy, but does work. We saw that on the political sphere uh, with President Trump. Uh, we've seen this now with NAFTA. And why is that important? because there is tensions right now, uh, particularly between the United States and China, and this may be an indicator that, in fact, it's a new tactic that the United States does employ, which is it takes it to the wire and then reaches a deal. So that is on the general picture, and that is very good news. But you mentioned Italy, and Italy is worth coming back to. So uh, in some ways, you can say we've got a, a populist government in the United States uh, with President Trump, and we have a populist government in Italy. The difference is, that in the United States, the popularism is about cutting tax and you have a strong economy and therefore you've got a, a, a positive background for the markets in general. Now in Italy, on the other hand, uh, you have a populist government that's about spending money. And what we saw last week is this brinkmanship by them, uh, that's to say by the government with the new budget, saying that they're going to take the deficit to 2.4% of GDP. It's still under the 3% that the EU would say no to, but it's a, lo a lot more than the 2% uh, that people were expecting and that's why the bond yield in Italy has gone up and people are watching to see what are they going to do next because they cannot deliver on all their promises. To, to promise to cut tax is easier than to promise to actually raise tax and pay for more stuff, particularly if we have a deficit situation and if the economy is not booming in the same way that it is advancing in the United States. So that's the other big news in Europe. But nonetheless, the overall picture is, look, what's come out of the NAFTA deal or whatever it's called now is, <laughs> is very good news, not just for the North American deal, but also for trades, uh, trading in general. So that's very good news. Yeah, I'm going to call it the UMC just because nobody has told me to call it anything else. And I just like the acronym. It's very short and easy to say. All right. So it's a lot of good news out there today. But how long do you think that can last? Italy's problems are not going away. I wonder, will this become a, a Greece-like situation, which kind of dragged on for multiple years this could be I mean and and again you go the, the problem with Italy's situation is um, uh, they haven't gone look had they gone over three percent or near to three percent of deficit then you have a problem right here right now what they've done is they've gone at 2.4 percent which is of deficit in spending which is more than the market has expected now what does that mean that means that they haven't broken the rules but it means they're going really close to the wire. And I repeat again, the difference between uh, Europe and between the United States is twofold. Number one, we don't have the same degree of growth. In fact, earnings are turning down in Europe of companies. And that bodes badly for the Italian economy. And secondly, uh, you haven't got inflation, which you have also in the United States. So on two measures of growth, if you like, um, you're not seeing the positive news. And that therefore means that even though the 2.4% percent deficit of the budget with budget deficit which the government in Italy has come up with is still within the three percent bound that is acceptable um, to, to the European Union nonetheless it tells you that you've got to watch uh, the, the trade there and particularly with bonds and that's why you've seen the bond deal go up the 10-year bond deal go up to 3.2 percent so yes Italy can be is it a Greece no it's not a Greece it's not that bad but is it going to drag on for some time sometime yes uh, and, and, and we've got to wait and see how, how it progresses from here because this is just the beginning. I mean, they can't, the, the reality is that they can't deliver on all the promises, which might then mean that the government, which is a coalition after all, might be unstable. Does it so make the European stock, quickly, does it make the European stock push. markets unattractive relative to the United States? So I think relative to the United States, the, uh, the United States stocks have been attractive for some time. And, and I've been saying that on your program, although over here, for some time to come. I think what makes European stocks slightly less attractive than, uh, than the United States is not just Italy per se, but the fact that earnings are not really uh, coming better than expected. In fact, they're disappointing mm -hmm. and because economic growth is much slower than expected. So that's what makes it uh, unattractive, not just Italy per se. Look, don't underestimate the fact that the U.S. economy is much stronger at this stage. And that on the world stage makes it on a relative basis a more attractive place to be.